Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to explore the differences, the enhancements that we've made between iClone 7.0 and 7.1 in regards to the timeline. Mostly, do with, uh, mostly to do with motion clips and layers and uh, saving motions and we'll talk about all the various uh, enhancements that we've made as we go along here. But what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the motion clip and layer keys. So in iClone 7.0 the layer keys, the motion layer keys and the clips were actually separate entities. And as you can see in this uh, little video here, we have our uh, guy dancing around doing a little uh, popping and locking or uh, what have you. If we click on the motion clip, we can move it and the layer keys will remain in the same area. And if we play back, we'll have a little bit of a weird kind of only motion keys and then we'll have the full uh, clip playing afterwards. Now, obviously, that's not ideal if you want to, you know, uh, bring your layer keys along. If you, if you spend a lot of time mod modifying your layer keys. Uh, if you wanted to bring those along in iClone 7.0, you'd have to multiple select your clip and all your layer keys together. And, you know, it's kind of a unnecessary and uh, hassle-filled step. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you in iClone 7.1 the difference. All right, so we have the same motion here in iClone 7.1. You can see we play back. He has a little doo -doo, doo 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 dance there. And if we just uh, click and drag our motion clip, we can click, click and drag it anywhere. And the layer keys will go along with it. The layer keys are attached to the motion clip, which is really a nice enhancement uh, for, like I mentioned, uh, situations like that. It's easier to bring the layer keys along with the clip. Next, let's talk about speed, time warp, and loop. Now, we've made a couple of enhancements here as well. So we're going to again start off with iClone 7.0. You can see we have that same motion clip. If we uh, toggle our speed on and we adjust the speed, you'll notice that the clip obviously will not be attached to the layer keys, and you'll have the I'm doing a really fast dance and then kind of a little slow jig there at the end there. So um, obviously we want to enhance that. Um, if we go to time warp as well, we can do time warp. Let's do an ease in and ease out. And with the time warp, you'll see that basically it's kind of doing the same thing. So the uh, keys don't go along with the time warp. The cell units don't change and it's kind of troublesome. We don't really know what the time warp is doing. And then we can actually loop it as well. If we loop it, you'll see the same kind of issue. All right, so we'll have those layer keys um, in the first section, but the layer keys will not be applied to the uh, second uh, copy of the clip there because it hasn't been attached to the uh, to the clip. Now in 7.1, let's take another quick look at this. So we have the uh, the same motion here. If I just uh, toggle my speed on here, I can uh, make him do a little bit of a faster dance. And those keyframes, you see the cell units will also uh, go along with the uh, with the speed adjustment there. And we have the entire thing, the layer keys and all kind of faster. We can uh, stretch it out and make it uh, slower as well if we'd like. Um, have a really slow uh, pop and lock and slow motion. Something like that. All right, let's go ahead and just uh, bring it back to about, uh, you know, value of one or so there. You can see in the timeline you have the one there. I mean, that's 100% value. So let's take a look now at the time warp. So if we go to the time warp on this particular clip in 7.1, uh, go right click on the clips like time warp. Let's do the ease out and ease in as well. You'll see the cell unit distribution will change as well. And this is kind of a nice visualization to uh, let you know, you know, what kind of uh, motions are going to be, or the progression of your uh, of your time warp. You can see it goes really slow in the middle there. And those uh, keyframes, those keys are also, motion layer keys are also uh, distributed correctly uh, according to the time warp that we've applied. All right, let's go ahead and just uh, press Control Z and undo that for now. Now, if we uh, do the uh, looping now, you just, if we go uh, toggle loop on and we just uh, loop this uh, once here, you'll see that we don't see the layer keys in the loop, but we'll see we'll see the enhancement. So his legs go a lot further up, for example, right here and over here. You can see they do go up pretty far as well. So uh, about this level within the clip, you can see we've enhanced that to uh, basically bring the leg up. That's all that really uh, that keyframe really does there. You can see it's on the right leg and the right foot. So it's bringing the leg up a little bit higher there. And you can see that uh, layer key, uh, because we've looped it, those layer key edits will uh, in apply to the second instance of our, the second loop rather, of our motion clip. Okay, next let's talk about the differences in saving your motions between uh, 7.0 and 7.1. So again, we have the same little dance in 7.0 here. And if we open up the collect clip track, the only way to save motions is to uh, click and drag in the collect clip track and add motion to library. We'll just call it uh, 7.0 uh, motion because we're original with our naming there. And then if we go up to our window and content manager, or uh, yeah, content manager there, you can see we have the 7.0 motion and we can apply the same motion. And it's basically just the same thing, but we have to click and drag in the collect clip track uh, in order to save this. 
Now in 7.1, we have the option if we have, you know, a single clip and we've, you know, done some uh, motion layer editing and stuff and we just want to save the clip itself, we don't have to click and drag in the collect, uh, clip track, although we can. You can still, you still have that feature available in 7.1, but we've also enhanced it so that if you right click on your clip, you can just go ahead and select save clip. And we'll just save it to, you know, our desktop, for example. We'll just call it uh, 7.1 motion, all right? And you can also save it to your uh, motion library and whatever, uh, whichever you choose. All right, I'm just going to save it to the desktop for now. Go ahead and save that. And if we go down to our desktop, let's find the uh, 7.1 uh, motion here. There it is. We'll just click and drag that into uh, iClone here. Where are we? There we go. Okay, whoops. I lost it there. Click and drag it into iClone. I think I let my mouth, uh, hand off the mouse there. Let's we'll apply it to our character at a uh, oh, different frame. Maybe over here. Okay, so there we go. So we'll have the exact same clip and everything is exactly the same as the first one here. So it's a really nice and quick, easy way to save your clip. You don't have to click and drag in the, in the uh, collect clip track and find, you know, which frame you're on. Sometimes you have to do that. You have to determine uh, single frames. Uh, so it's kind of a hassle. And uh, 7.1, we have this new save enhancement. In addition, you'll also see in the clip that I've applied in 7.1 that the, uh, the uh, motion layer keys are flattened into the clip. Now we may in the future provide the uh, uh, further enhancement of having those layer keys uh, extruded separate from the clip. Well, they'll still be attached to the clip, but you'll be able to see them uh, when you reapply that motion. The, the layer keys will automatically be there. Um, however, that may be in, the, in a future version. So to go further on the theme of uh, kind of combining clips and uh, motion layer keys into the same group, kind of linking them together. Uh, well, now we have the option to, uh, when we add a key pose, like after our motion clip, it'll extend the motion clip. However, let's take a quick look again. Uh, back in the day when we had a 7.0, if we uh, have a uh, add a key pose to our uh, motion clip, so you can see we have the same motion here. If I go to a future frame, somewhere like, you know, 340 or something like that, and I just double click in the uh, torso track there and, you know, bring his torso down using the motion or edit motion layer tool there. You'll see that it'll add a uh, layer key, but no motion clip extension. All right, we can go to a further frame and do the same thing again. And you can see that we have, you know, the, the uh, motion's there, but the clip is not uh, extended. And that can be kind of a hassle because if you have this kind of uh, situation, uh, layer keys can kind of get messy. So once again, let's go ahead and do the same thing with uh, 7.1 here. Same uh, popping and locking clip here again. And let's just go and into a future uh, frame here, somewhere like 346 or something, and uh, double click in the uh, torso track. And you'll see it'll automatically extend that clip. So all this, all these layers are now, you know, uh, combined into the clip, which is really nice. And if we, you know, do the same thing, bring his body down like that, go to a future frame, like maybe uh, 370 something, whatever it is, 379 there, do the same thing, and just maybe bring it up. You can see all that uh, information will be combined into that motion clip. Now keep in mind in 7.1 we have this option auto extend and it's currently on okay so when we have auto extend on this is what's going to happen we're going to auto extend that clip and we add motion layer keys if i press ctrl z a few times here and get rid of all that stuff uh, if we turn auto extend off then we'll have the same kind of functionality as we did in 7.0 so we'll just again double click in the uh well actually we can just go to this frame here and bring them down like that so we'll have the motion layer keys separate uh, again and just like this so you can see it's the same, the same a separate thing here. We'll just do a little bow there, but uh, they'll actually create their own separate little clips here. You can see if we zoom in, you can see the separate little clips. Now, if you want to merge, you know, this motion, this kind of curtsy, whatever you want to call it, into a single motion, well, you can actually do that by clicking and dragging in the motion track, and you can right-click and select Merge Clips, and that'll merge them into one single clip just like this, and there you go, okay? So that's all there is to it. All right, pretty cool stuff. So the last thing we're going to talk about is transition layer keys. Now here again in 7.0, we've applied a separate motion and we're extending the transition area from uh, this uh, Scarecrow 1 to this Fresno 2 uh, dance move here. And you can see we want to kind of create a little bit of a difference. We want to get a motion key in the transition area. So now when you, want to, when you do this in 7.0, what's going to happen is if you, you so for example, bring this arm down, let's press the... Uh, E hotkey to bring a rotation gizmo up and just bring his arm down like this. So we don't want his arm up like that. We want it to be down like this. So in the transition area, it's going to kind of mess around with the first frame of the uh, Fresno. So what we have to do is go back to the first frame of the Fresno clip, press reset, and that will uh, add another key there for the Fresno clip. 
Um, so this is kind of, you know, gets complicated after a while, especially when you're, you know, doing a lot of uh, editing within the uh, transition area. It's not really ideal. All right, so now in 7.1, we have the same two motions here. You can see the uh, first Scarecrow clip, and I've applied the second uh, Fresno 02 clip just like this. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with the transition area. Uh, we can actually create a separate clip for our transition area, which is really useful. I'll show you why in just a moment here. So let's bring this one right up next to the uh, first one here, and let's uh, kind of extend the transition area here. So what we have right now is we have this uh, kind of, where his arm is up right there, his arm comes up like this, and maybe we don't want it to come up that far. Uh, if we want to, you know, enhance that uh, or, or change that rather, what we would do, for example, is, uh, you know, let's actually kind of combine that with this area here. So you can see his, his right arm's up like that, and we can go here and uh, where his right arm is up like this and just kind of break the clip here. And I'm going to just uh, delete that middle part there and bring this second part up, and let's extend that transition area into the uh, first one there. Okay, so now we have kind of a, where he kind of comes, his arm comes around like this. Maybe we don't want it to, you know, be that high. We want it to be a little bit lower. We want it to kind of have a low part while it comes in front like this. So what we'd want to do normally is we'd want to, you know, go to a frame like this, for example, and double click in the right arm track and just kind of uh, press the E hotkey and rotate that arm down like this. And uh, you can see when it does that, it kind of just it messes around with the transition area and the kind of the arm kind of pops back up so we can you know do whatever we want and it won't really you know go to the position that we want it to do because actually the transition uh area is interfering with the motion layer key that we've applied here so what i want to do is i'm going to control z that a few times until i get rid of all those things here and then i'm going to right click in the transition area here and i'm going to go ahead and select create transition clip now this creates a separate clip for the transition okay so from here to here if we didn't want that arm to be down now, we can go ahead and bring it down. And we won't have anything messing around uh, with our transition area there. So we have something like this. So his arm will come down and then back up like that. All right. So that's the really the really cool advantage of having a uh, transition clip, uh, the possibility of a transition clip. You can edit the transition motion and keep the same motion without the other layer keys affecting uh, what you're doing there. All right. So that's really all there is to it. Just a few really nice and uh, interesting enhancements to iClone 7.1 for all you uh, people who are into the timeline stuff, into the animations. Uh, hopefully you enjoy it, and uh, we're always waiting, uh, always looking forward to your feedback for further enhancements as well. Um, but for now, that's about it. So uh, thanks so much for watching, and hopefully you learned a lot. Uh, make sure you check out our other videos on our YouTube channel and our forums at forum.reillusion.com, and I shall see you in the next video.